Today we'll discuss advantages and limits of unenhanced abdominal pelvic CT. Unenhanced abdominal pelvic CT refers to CT performed without the administration of oral or intravenous contrast agents. The technique is attractive to emergency physicians because it eliminates the diagnostic delay inherent in administration of oral contrast. This delay is approximately 100 minutes, even when prophylactic antiemetics are administered. Unenhanced CT eliminates the risk of intravenous contrast reactions, contrast extravasation, and contrast nephropathy. CT can be performed before creatinine values are available, and problems of adequate IV access for CT contrast are solved. A range of important conditions can be identified without the use of oral or IV contrast. Recent studies suggest that neither oral nor intravenous contrast may be needed in appendicitis. The sensitivity and specificity are excellent, and the positive and negative likelihood ratios are large enough and small enough to allow exclusion or ruling in of appendicitis. Examine this patient's CT performed without oral or IV contrast. In the patient's right lower quadrant, there is inflammatory fat stranding surrounding an abnormal appendix. The psoas muscle is visible, and the fat plane that normally separates the cecum and psoas muscle is obscured. Compare with the normal fat plane surrounding the psoas muscle on the opposite normal side. Also compare with normal subcutaneous fat. Normal fat appears black because of its low density. As inflammation occurs, lymphatic vessels leak, increasing the water content of adipose tissue. As a consequence, the density increases and the tissue appears brighter on CT, even without the administration of any contrast agents. These coronal images are from the same patient. Again, notice that the vessels within the abdomen and pelvis are not filled with IV contrast, nor is the bowel opacified with oral contrast. In the patient's right lower quadrant, there is inflammatory fat stranding surrounding the cecum and appendix. The appendix also contains a calcification consistent with an appendicolith. Not surprisingly, diverticulitis can also be detected with high sensitivity and specificity without the addition of contrast agents. In a 2005 study which compared unenhanced CT to CT with IV contrast, there was no significant difference between sensitivity and specificity. No oral contrast was used in either scan. Here is an example of an unenhanced CT performed in a patient with diverticulitis. In the patient's left lower abdomen, a segment of colon is seen with a diverticulum. In fact, multiple diverticula are present around the periphery, notable as small sacs. Surrounding this segment of colon, there is inflammatory fat stranding, just as in the case of appendicitis presented earlier. In this coronal image from the same patient, the same segment of colon can be seen, again, with multiple diverticula. Although subtle, fat stranding is present around this segment of colon consistent with diverticulitis. CT is also 100% sensitive for free air, including collections as small as one millimeter. Air has a density of minus 1,000 Hounsfield units and appears black on all window settings. The next densest body tissue is fat, at around minus 50 Hounsfield units. Consequently, pneumoperitoneum provides intrinsic contrast and is seen without the addition of other contrast agents. Historically, air was recognized early as a useful contrast agent, for example, in air contrast enema. Adjusting the CT window using PAX controls can allow easier discrimination of fat from air. On a typical abdominal window, Air is completely black, and fat is quite dark, almost black. Increasing the brightness and contrast makes the fat appear brighter, while air appears quite black. As an extreme example, here the window has been changed from a typical soft tissue or abdominal setting to a lung window, making all tissues but air appear bright white. Rupture of abdominal aortic aneurysm can be recognized without any contrast agents. On this unenhanced CT, a large abdominal aortic aneurysm is visible. Calcium deposits in the aortic wall appear bright white. 
Retroperitoneal blood is visible as an intermediate gray shade similar to soft tissues such as the psoas muscle and intraaortic blood. On the patient's left, the normal fat plane separating the psoas muscle from the aorta is obscured by extraaortic blood, which shares the same density. Compare with the normal psoas muscle and normal fat plane on the patient's right-hand side. Fat normally separates the psoas muscle and aorta. Compare also with subcutaneous fat. Pitfalls of unenhanced CT. The sensitivity of unenhanced CT for many conditions can create a false sense of security for the emergency physician. A negative unenhanced CT does not rule out all abdominal pathology. Other serious conditions can be identified without the use of oral contrast, but require administration of intravenous contrast. Chief among these are abdominal vascular catastrophes, including mesenteric ischemia and abdominal aortic dissection. To repeat, emergency physicians should be careful to consider the complete differential diagnosis as some life-threatening conditions cannot be excluded by unenhanced abdominal CT. Consider the example of CT for mesenteric ischemia. Biphasic CT with mesenteric CT angiography is a technique in which IV contrast is injected but no oral contrast is used. Two sets of images are acquired using the same single IV contrast bolus. First, shortly after intravenous contrast injection, images are acquired demonstrating filling of the aorta and its proximal branches, including the mesenteric blood vessels. After a short delay, another set of images is acquired. This demonstrates filling of the portal venous system with contrast. In the event that either the arterial or venous systems are occluded, a filling defect will be demonstrated on CT. The technique has been shown to be 96% sensitive and 94% specific. One important caveat should be noted about this study. Mesenteric ischemia is a rare condition and it is extremely difficult to conduct a study with large numbers of patients. Consequently, studies of this type are poorly powered and have wide confidence intervals. Consider the following case. A 35-year-old male with no past medical history, presenting with right upper quadrant pain, a white blood cell count of 25,000, a bicarbonate of 13, an anion gap of 20, and a glucose in the 250 range. An unenhanced CT was performed initially and interpreted as normal. Hours later, an IV contrast enhanced CT was performed, diagnosing superior mesenteric artery occlusion. Sadly, diagnostic delay led to the patient losing his entire small bowel, resulting in TPAN dependence for life. Review these images from this patient. On the left-hand side, the unenhanced CT performed initially. On the right, the contrast-enhanced CT. We'll take a bird's eye view at first, looking at a few slices. Note the degree of abdominal distension in the enhanced CT occurring several hours after the initial CT. Now let's look at this area of interest. With this coned in view, we can see the aorta, inferior vena cava, and crust of the diaphragm. On the left hand side are unenhanced CT images, and on the right hand side matching enhanced CT images. As we descend into the abdomen, the proximal superior mesenteric artery or SMA becomes visible. Let's track this vessel as it leaves the aorta. The left renal vein comes into view entering the inferior vena cava. The left renal vein normally passes beneath the proximal SMA. Without IV contrast, thrombus in the SMA is not visible on the left hand side. In the right hand image with IV contrast, a filling defect within the SMA is visible. Without IV contrast, patent and occluded mesenteric vesicles are indistinguishable in the left hand image. With IV contrast in the right hand image, patent mesenteric vessels fill with contrast. The fully occluded SMA does not fill with contrast and appears darker. Why not perform biphasic IV contrasted CT in all patients with abdominal pain? This method increases the rate patient radiation exposure because a second set of images must be acquired after a short delay.